Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning to you. I guess it is afternoon in the Eastern Caribbean. But it is still morning here. Hey, Katy Clem. How are you doing, my friend? It is nice to have you as viewer number one. My name is Alan Palmerson, Vincent and the Grenadines, favorite and most hated son. Katy Clem, do you love roses? Do you love roses? Yeah. I am back to the rose garden again. I have gotten lazy since they opened the rose garden. I have not been going anywhere else to do these videos. Well, I'm giving you all of these beautiful roses. All of these just for you this morning. All of these roses are just for you this morning. Let us ask a very important question. Which one of the Labour supporters is going to be next? Which one of them is going to find themselves in the same situation that Cornelius John finds himself in. And guess what, people? I am still, I am still of my opinion that Cornelius John must take where he get, go home, grind his teeth, and bear it. If grinding his teeth is not enough for him to bear it, let him suck salt. Or let leave Ashel alone. Leave Karim Nelson alone. Let them go and do the state affairs. Let Karim Nelson go back to persecute criminals. And let Ashel Morgan go back to make the laws of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Right? In her capacity as senator and in her capacity as, we call it, De Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly. Let these two young people strive. Right? But today, the question I want to ask is which of the ULP supporters is going to find themselves in the same situation that Mr. John have found himself in? Which of those ULP supporters is going to find themselves tomorrow a victim of crime and they will not have any means of redress to the criminal activities that they would have become a victim of? Which of these ULP supporters are going to very soon become a victim of crime and will find themselves in a situation where the criminals are allowed to walk free and there is no action will be taken against them. This is the question I am here to ask this morning. People, if you're going to hang out with me for the next couple of minutes, right? I want you to share this video. Share this video on your page. Share this video on your friend page. Share this video on your room and tag someone when you share the video. I think we have some visitors here. I guess they were sent. Thanks, you, Katy Clem. Thank you, Katy Clem. I think Ralph Gonzalez's minions have already sent his, his people around. As soon as I start the video, they came. <laughs> but now, let us get down to the people's business, right?
let us get down to the people's business. Good morning, GP Macintosh. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. And GP, I'm still waiting on those videos with you performing and with Sil Macintosh performing. I am still waiting to see those videos. Right? People, which of Shitstein supporters is going to be the next victim where they would find themselves in a situation where they become victim of crime and there is no redress for the criminal activities that was imposed upon them because they have offended the wrong person. They have offended someone who has more authority, who has more power than they have. Who is next? Right? Who is next? I am, I am hoping that Shitstein, Ralph Gonsalves, Ralph Shitstein Gunstav will instruct Colin John to arrest and caution Cornelius John. I am hoping it come to that stage where Ralph Shitstein Gunstavs will instruct Colin John. To arrest Cornelius wait Cornelius John and and char and and caution him and charge him for the report that Ashel Morgan made against him for the report Karim Nelson made against him and for the report Mrs. John made against him also. I hope... Look at all of them. <laughs> you see all these people here? Every one of them had abortion before. Every one had abortion queens. Yes? That is why they have to be slave. So I hope Ralph conserves. I hope shit said instruct the useless commissioner Colin John to arrest to arrest Cornelius John and charge him for the offenses that were reported against him. You understand? And I hope I hope that those other ULP supporters who supported Ralph in all his criminal activities, I hope that they are trembling. I hope they are living in the land of uncertainty where they are wondering if they are next because that is what they deserve to be placed in a situation where they are uncertain of their future as it relates to crime being perpetrated against them. People, I'm just, I'm just setting up my, I'm just um, tightening up this thing here so I could. The abortion queens have left. Yeah. And that is what I wanted to come to, where the ULP supporters become so unsure of themselves, right? Because remember, you know, every criminal activity Ralph Popich Shitstein perpetrated upon Vincentians because of their political affiliation, right? All of these people stood by him, they stood with him, and they support him 
with his illegal activities. So know that their, their safety is on shore because now anyone who, Ralph, who sits in favored or favors more than they are can inflict criminal act against them and can walk away free right to walk away without ever having to answer a matter as they reported to the police and this is what i am happy for right let all of these people let all of these people who fail to throw out the shit and throw it in their neighbor's yard because they were affiliated to Ralph Gonsalve or shit saying, let them feel the uncertainty that Bigger Migs felt for almost five years while that evil dirty bastard slowly dismantled Bigger Migs multi-million dollars block making company let them feel the uncertainty that bigger makes employers employees felt when bigger makes had to lay them off let them feel the uncertainty of being unable to function in a community and not knowing if someone is going to impose themselves upon them call shit stain and tell shit stain that i just stop off um i just stop off hollis christopher because he was too fresh and shit stain take up against hollis christopher i hope hollis christopher is next i hope where the, where the, where the lady name who was supervisor of election. I hope she gets her share too. You understand? I hope Ronald Marx gets his share also. And I hope Ralph will do as he always do. You know, Ralph really hate this name shit say. The last video I did, right? I forget to call him shit say in the video. His people, did not interfere with the video counter as much as they did, they normally do. Right? Because I forget, it's really hit the name shit stain. And I know the name is catching on because I spoke to somebody and the word shit stain roll off the tongue. So freely. And I know it's catching on. Right? So If you go back and check my videos, you will notice every video I use the word shit stain in. Yeah, Miss Findley, I hope Miss Findley, I hope Miss Findley get her come up in and I hope it is done, my Baba. Good afternoon, good morning. And I hope that Ralph two sides like how we throw that damn dirty bastard Cornelius John in the garbage and favor Ashel Morgan and Karim, Sim, uh, Karim Nelson. And I hope, I hope Colin John, let me tell you something. Colin John is just a figurehead. He's sitting in the office and receiving a check, but he has no authority. Colin John has a law degree and Colin John is having, listen to me, Colin John being a police officer for over 20 years, right? Uh, almost going on to 30 years, Colin John was a police officer. Colin John went and get a law degree. He was working in the DPP office, right? He was working as a lawyer in the DPP office. A high profile case like this, a high profile case like this, has to lay on Colin John's desk 
before it go to the BP, the DPP office and the director of public prosecution who has less investigative experience than Colin John right who was involved in the law enforcement less for you less years than Colin John send back the, the, the case file to Colin John tell him that it's a piece of shit nothing in it is clear the director of public prosecution who have never investigated a matter in their life send back the case file to Colin John a man who spent more than 25 years as a police officer going to incident recording statements doing investigation and Colin John does not even know the difference with an ambiguous statement and the difference between a clear statement and he's sitting in the seat of commissioner police the director of public prosecution sent it back to him this is ambiguous clear up all of the ambiguities I would have just to see red lines under the statement it, I would imagine to see red lines under the investigator's statement asking them for clarity this is a man who should stay appointed to the office of commissioner of police let them block the people I call him Ralph should stay because that name was stick you understand I know people are afraid to call him so but there are a lot of people in service who will call him shit stain shit stain appointed Colin John as commissioner of police Colin John who had more than 25 plus years of policing experiences experience Colin John who is supposed to be proficient in statements writing and statement taking and then teaching people how to write and take proper statement Colin John who is the commissioner of police who is supposed to be supervising all of the police that trains police officer how to be police in service in the Grenadines the same Colin John had it's a shot stain you're afraid him until it gets a shit stain that is s-h-o-t-s-t-a-i-n shot stain shit stain colin john who is supposed to be correcting people's statement is sending statement and case files to the director of public prosecution with ambiguities he is a lawyer he's a police for more than 25 years a practicing director of public prosecution in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and he can't even prepare ha Katy Clem I no no I know you're not afraid of him and you cannot even prepare a proper case file to go to a lawyer in an office that you are functioning in the same capacity in I am so disappointed I am so disappointed you understand I am so disappointed that Colin John is having a case for let he review return to him for clarity for clarification he is a police officer he is a lawyer he is the director of public prosecution in the ex capacity <laughs> okay, let me tell you Cathy Clem I know a lot of people who would normally have guts under normal circumstances will lose their guts because they're afraid that Ralph Hena. You know, don't be surprised if Ralph. Don't be surprised if Ralph used the um the ambassador to New York to cause to lose his job. You know? He will do that. That is a do, shit that is part of shit stain. That is part of shit stain's foreign policy to oppress 
and up exploit Vincentians in the diaspora who don't agree with him and who oppose him. So don't be surprised. Don't be surprised at all. You understand? So now we're talking all thing in one. What kind of a I know that. <laughs> that is why only certain people share my video. A few of them. And when I touch shit still, they're free to touch it. When I, when I speak about shit still in this manner, they're free to touch it. Right now, we have these people around who will come to interfere with the video, but that's quite okay. That's quite okay. You understand? But... This is how we like to have Saint Vincent, where he have Vincentians looking like they are more stupid than he is. There is no one in Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. There is no one in Saint Vincent and the Grenadines who are more silly than Ralph is. Colin John could put himself in a position where Ralph cut off his balls, castrate him. Where he has no power but receiving a check. You understand? Life is more than preparing for tomorrow. Life is preparing for tomorrow with integrity and honesty and decency and with a state of mind that leave you satisfied and comfortable with yourself where you can look yourself in the mirror. You understand? So when people like Colin John will settle to be commissioner of police right and have well conserves who can who could not even function as a lawyer who could not even run a legal practice in st vincent and make a profit manipulate him and tell him what to do and how to do it he had to be a damn jackass you understand if you allow a man who could not even pay staff unless his mother pay his staff for him who are who was practicing law since it was 1979 Nigeria about right and is an Abe and have never really win a case all you do is, is encourage people plead guilty. I can talk to the judge for you. Whether they're guilty or not, plead guilty. I can make sure you don't go to prison. Don't go to prison. You got to be kidding. Colin John, I expect better of you. I expect better of you. You understand? You, pre you are supervising the entire police force. A high-profile case. A high profile case where the entire nation have an opinion about it one way or the other. A high profile case that involved a certain politician. A high profile case that involved the director of public prosecution, a junior. You have to review that case before you send it to the Director of Public Prosecution Office. The CID officers, the officer who supervised that case, must send it to you for your right away before you go to the Director of Public Prosecution Office. And you in your capacity of Commissioner of Police, a trained lawyer who has been practicing law in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, in the highest prosecuting office in the land, the office of the director of public prosecution, Colin John, the junior, your junior, your junior sent back the case file. They never investigated a criminal matter in their entire life, but they toss it back to your office, slam it in your desk, and tell you, go back and reinvestigate the matter. 
take statements that are clear and concise and precise. You are the man who supervises the, 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 the entire police force and you can't even distinguish between an ambiguous statement and a statement that has clarity that even the ordinary person could understand. I am ashamed of Colin John. Right? I totally am ashamed of Colin John. Now, with another thing here, is it? Kebak has asked Colin John <laughs> if Ashel Morgan and Karim Nelson were cautioned because they call in Cornelius John to be cautioned. Right? But I want them arrested. I want them to arrest Cornelius John. Let them pay. For all the evil he supported. Listen to this. He says that the police requested two people who should be arrested and charged. He is saying that the police requested them to give a caution statement. The police is not supposed to request them give a caution statement. The police is supposed to take them into custody. Take them into the inquiry room, caution them, question them, and let them refuse to answer the questions. You don't request criminals to give a caution statement. You arrest them. You charge them. You caution them. They have a right to answer or not to answer. And you know, K back here says a joker too. Imagine K took her client to be cautioned. Why would you expose your client who is a victim of gunshot wound to the police in the capacity as a defendant? Why would you do that? And the police is telling you that they speak to the assailants and request them to give a caution statement while the police is not supposed to request the police is supposed to arrest them take them into custody caution them and let them exercise their rights to give or not to give a statement to answer or not to answer the question but the police has a right to put the question to them they have a right to decline to answer it Nah, I don't want to. I don't want to study law. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to study law at all. Let me tell you something. There is no lawyer in Saint Vincent Grenadines. None, none of them who can go into court and win me in a case. Let me tell you something in California here. Shit stain people in California, right? Take me before the federal court in California as a defendant. Right? How you call them? The federal attorney. Three of them sitting behind that case. Three federal attorneys sitting in a case against Alan Palmer. And I guess what? I backhand slap them all, every one of them. Listen to me, they couldn't handle me. There is no lawyer in St. Vincent Grenadines who can stand up against me in a court of law. I don't have to go and do law. I don't have to go and do law. Like policing, law is easy. I don't have to go and do law. You understand? In, in, when I was in New York City, every day shit stain people. Every day shit stain people will send the police for me when I used to play my trade, selling my handbags on the side of the streets. They've arrested me. They, they put me in, in the cell 
I slept like a baby. They take me to court. And I win all the cases, even though I was on the side of the street. Breaking the law of the land as a vendor without a license. I still win the cases. You got to be kidding. They can't handle me in court. You understand? They can't handle me. But what I'm saying is Colin John, a trained lawyer, a practicing lawyer, is not to say he's like Atlan Brown who is a trained lawyer but has not practiced because he's still been a police right he has not practiced in the field of law he has practiced as a police officer who are enforcing the law from a police perspective colin john have been a police officer for 25 years plus colin john went and he pursued and was successful in obtaining a law degree. Remember last Ralph Dohan a law degree, you know? Remember that? Colin John. When he took the bar exams and he passed the bar exams. Colin John was practicing law in the highest prosecution office in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That means Colin John was required to review case file as a lawyer from the police Colin John is now commissioner of police who is supervising every investigation that is happening in St. Vincent and the Grenadines Colin John submit a case file to the director of public prosecution and the junior lawyer Send it back to Colin. Send it back to Colin. Hey. So it, it leads me to ask. What kind of police Colin John was as a constable? Because the preparation of a case file, any intelligent constable will know what the charges are based on the report that was made based on the injury that was made that was received and was reported and they will take the statement based on the allegation that was made you can't take statement to satisfy theft if it is a wounding you can't take you can't approach a statement to satisfy burglary if it was an indecent assault you have to take the statements to satisfy the alleged allegation that was made so if the pull if if as if a member of the public comes to your station and says shaman bailey slapped me on the right side of my face when i am taking the statements from the witnesses i want to know first thing that at the day on the date at the time at the place that this incident happened the witnesses were present i want to know that they saw shaman in the area and they saw the defendant in the area I want to know that they see when sh when the defendant slapped Charmin and with which hand he slapped her with. I want to know what she was Charmin result, what was Charmin did when she was slapped. I want to know what the defendant say after he finished slapping her, what he did after he finished slapping her. You have to remember people. You cannot go. This is simple, simple, basic policing. Any recruit who has spent three months in police school, training school, who have learned how to write a statement, will be able to follow the guidelines if they understand how to classify offenses. 
So where and how these ambiguities come about where things, the information that was presented to the director of public prosecution is not, is not clear. Colin John, I hear Shaman Bailey says, I hear Shaman Bailey said in a video that you must resign. I didn't agree with her then. Right? But I am now joining the call that Colin John must resign. Because apart from allegations of sexual assault on one who you are supposed to be managing, now you have proven that you are incapable. Now that you have proven that you are incapable of doing basic and understanding basic police work. I, as a police officer, for 14 years, in two sovereign jurisdiction, have never had a senior officer or a director of public prosecution send back my case file. All of my case files always went through to the courts. A lot of the time the people plead guilty and when I give evidence they are always convicted. I have had two cases dismissed from me in two sovereign jurisdictions as a practicing police officer. One in St. Vincent after 10 years and one in Bermuda after four years of service. Let me tell you something, every matter that I take to court, I win them except for those two. Never had a director of public prosecution say, Palmer, the statement is unclear. Never had a director of public prosecution, senior officer, a sergeant, said that your summary is unclear. Never, never, never. So it shows that Colin John is really incapable of being a, that is why Ralph Gonzalez have to tell him everything what he must do and that is why he is following the wrong instructions from Shitsley. he's following the wrong instructions because people let me see how fast this, this counter is going to go down right Shit stain, shit stain. I call him the PM out of his name. We call him shit stain, shit stain. Everything he thought must be washed with rain. <laughs> now, let me tell you, people. Let me tell you something. Policing is the easiest job in the entire world. If you can be a mother, if you have a child, and you can be a mother, you can be a police officer. If you have a child and you can be a father, you can be an effective police officer. If you could read and write and you're honest, you can be an effective police officer. It is not a hard job. Let me tell you something. When I was a teenager, I was a vector Control inspector, I work with the public health. Go around to the mosquito man, come on and put malatian in your in your, in your um in your thing to prevent mosquitoes from coming. Let me tell you something. Understanding the concept and the science behind being a vector control officer is more difficult than being a police. I'm telling you. You understand? Because being a vector control officer. Is really science, right? It's really measurement. First thing, you have to be able to identify every mosquito on set by watching it. You must be able to say that is an Egypt, it is a gypsy mosquito. That is an, 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 an analophies mosquito, right? And they have a really series of mosquitoes. You have to be able to identify them on sight. You have to be able 
to go in a person's house and look at a pitcher of water if estimate how much water is in that pitcher and put in the right amount of um, treatment in that water to ensure that you don't kill the people plants and ensure that if mosquito breathe in that thing right the eggs will not hatch or the larvae will die so there is a science behind this you know you are stepping out of something that you never knew before to learn something new policing is something that all of us knew we all of knew we all know what is right and what is wrong right we may not be able to classify the crimes but with time as a matter of fact most people know what is wounding what is assault what is theft what is burglary these are things that we know naturally from living from living so when you go into a anybody with common sense and who is honest can be an effective police and if you can read if you can't read they have a problem because they will not be able to properly document the incident if you can't read and write they will not be able to document and you re you are required to document incident policing is the easiest job in the whole world being a lawyer is not far from being a police officer. It's another easy job. But the only thing is case laws. The law has a more a, a wider branch than policing. So when Colin John is unable to present a proper case file to the director of public prosecution, make me feel shame that the commissioner of police, who's a lawyer, who have been practicing law for almost three years before he go back to the police force cannot review a case file and see ambiguities and say people clear up this before we send it to the DPP superintendent I thought you reviewed this case file you understand you have people like Calbot Streaker and his cousin who was the inspector at Calico. I can't remember his, his name. These guys were boss in case file preparation and supervising people and ensuring that their case files are properly prepared. Noel Patterson, although Noel Patterson spent most of his 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 years in service as a SSU um, police officer running about the mountains the service and the Grenadines going on eradication and doing all of these military things. When Noel Patterson was thrown from SSU to Barrelly, the man do so bap like this. He was back in the ball. He understood Noel Patterson was a corporal supervising us. And when Noel sent a case file to the sergeant, to the he don't send it to the sergeant because Conch couldn't do anything. Send it to the officer. The officer sent it right to the DPP. Never came back. And these, these are people who they throw the police force and promote men like John. You understand? So I don't know what is happening in St. and Grenadines with the education revolution huh where St. Vincent is spending millions of dollars every year on things that we can produce easily with a five thousand dollars investment you give a man five thousand dollars and you say do this and St. Vincent will be able to cut back and almost 10 million dollars a year in foreign exchange to import simple things and we can provide our market and you give another man another five thousand dollars to do the same thing one will provide this local market 
one could provide Barbados and Trinidad. Help them. But we are politicians like Shitstein who run in the country who don't know what's happening. Simple things. Simple, simple things we can do to cut back almost 10 million of dollars in foreign exchange. You know what that means? That means that little $5,000 investment or the $10,000 investment you make in a little man, he would employ about four, about 10 people. $5,000, $10,000, he will be able to employ at least 10 people year round. The, same, the government of St. and the Grenadines will save at least $10 million in foreign exchange. So that means that little company could become a multi-million dollars company in the matter of two years, if we place right. I can see this happening in about four industries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But we are not thinking. We are not thinking. That means we can our our export market can now evolve. Where the common man is now making money to take care of his family. You understand? It can, we, we can do it. But we have a man in government who don't understand how to manage a small island economy. A man in government who don't understand what small island economy development is all about. How can shit stay in? Choose to stay in government. Let me tell you something, people. We have an opposition who are lost also. You understand? I will not tell you these plans. I will not tell you what industry. I will not tell you how to go about it. Because Vincent deserves the government that they have. So let me bear me grinds. Let Vincent bear the grinds until they rise up and get rid of that government and say, Alan, it's time for you to come home to run the country. Let me tell you something, people. Running the economy of St. Vincent and Grenadines is so easy. Right? Enter CARICOM trade alone could take us back to where we were. Enter, listen to me carefully, people. Enter CARICOM. Trade alone can move St. Vincent. Hi, morning, Pat. Can move St. Vincent from where we are now, where our GDP. We have not seen an increase in GDP for the past 20 years. Enter CARICOM trade alone could move us from that place to where we were in the banana glory days. Enter CARICOM trade only. I'm not talking about sending things to America or Japan or China or Canada. I am talking about enter CARICOM trade alone could bring us back to the stage where remember in the 80s everybody had a pickup everybody was buying gas everybody was doing business I could bring us back to that stage just by enter carry come trade alone I'm not even talking about tourism because as far as I concern I am concerned right I don't want white tourists in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, personally. We can develop a tourist market with the inter-caricom let Trinidad, Jamaica and all the other islands who think that they need 
white business to flourish let them take the caucasian tourists right we will cater for inter-caribbean tourism it's easy people but when you have people in government who is leading a country who don't understand the dynamics of small island economy who don't understand the dynamics of growing a small economy we'd always have trouble we'd always have trouble you understand so i don't know what shit Stein is doing so he managing the economy of st Vincent and grenadines but people look at it again look at it again thank god for the suffering i hope the suffering I hope the eruption of the volcano and the threat to life will be a discouraging, a discouraging factor to all of those Caucasians who run from and give No Ricky Odin, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying to train police, I'm saying that if you are a police for three months and you understand statement writing, right? You would be able to produce a proper statement with the points to prove the offense if you understand the procedure. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that that um, training should be three months. I'm saying that if you understand, because remember, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, when they had a shortage of police, they sent police officers to training school for six weeks, six or eight weeks, right? And they put them on the streets. And some of them were able to record proper statements. So I'm not saying, right? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that we should train our police for, for three months. What I'm saying is that after three months, and you have done your, your, your statement writing course, you should be able to take a, a proper statement without the kind of ambiguities that I'm sure that showed up in the statements that the director of public prosecution sent them back. Ah, now you agree with me. Yes, I think you misunderstood what I was saying. I know, I would never suggest that. Six months is, is for to cover all of the things that you need to know as a police officer before you put you in the streets because even though you know them the application of those things is still another problem because to know how to record a statement right to sit down in a real environment with someone who is stressed and to record a statement as you should is another problem so even though you know how to do a thing when you're put in the real life situation it complicates things a little so people have to get adjusted to the real life situation in doing anything that they learn in school yes so people let me tell you something the problem that is happening in St. Vincent and the is no problem that I can't solve you understand have to understand when you are faithful to the most I the most I open your eyes to a lot of things I can bring example right of ten thousand dollars investment in small corporation that could cut back that could cut back on the expending of needed foreign exchange to other countries simple simple thing so that means if you can invest ten and cut back on almost 10 million dollars of foreign exchange in a particular area if you invest 40 50 thousand dollars that that means you can now satisfy the entire market and start exporting but what guns have they ain't smart they're not smart enough to understand this concept you understand they're not smart enough to look at the situation that they are in 
and find feasible solution to solve the problems they're not smart enough they are not smart enough let me tell you something people this is a simple simple problem we are facing but what he is good at is oppressing and taking away jobs from people because they don't support him what Ralph, what shit saying is good at is destroying local industry industry that people have put their black people have put their blood sweat and tears in to build like the building and loan association our parents join building and loan and grandparents join building and loan association and they bring it into what it was right it's people like 12 guns having them who kill building and loans and when people listen to this when the building and loans association management brought it to Ralph Gonzalez's attention that the building and loan is indebted and we soon got a business it has not been born out as yet but I can bet Ralph Gonzalez was using his authority as prime minister and he was taking monies I can bet anything Shitstein was using his authority as Prime Minister and he was taking loans from the Building and Loans Association to supplement government profit, government um, projects. That is why they saw it fit to go to him and tell him, listen, like we can't afford it anymore. It has not been born up because everybody's keeping secret for Shitstein because otherwise the building alone is a private institution it's a membership institution that is a private institution members only right it is privately and privately managed so their financial affairs is private the management of the building and loan association had only one obligation to go to its members and says say to the members things are not nice we are indebted and we will not be able to function. But they went to the Prime Minister. Why did they go to Shitstein? It's because it had not been born out yet, but it could come out sooner or later. I could bet anything in the same way he was going to the NIS and taking up money after he sell the National Commercial Bank. Because remember, after Shitstein bankrupt the National Commercial Bank, the building alone went out of business, right? So he was using the National Commercial Bank as his personal cash cow to take loans to do government project to pay people like um, Stanley John, um, the boy who beat up his wife's name, Ashel Morgan's um, uncle, Sian Marshall. He was using money to place people like um casper london and all these people who were and to do government project you understand and when he bankrupt the national commercial bank he was between the national Com insurance scheme and the building and loans because his mother had up to a million plus dollars in the building and loan he was prime minister you understand? He is Prime Minister. So there's where he was getting kill me dead. If anyone asks the management or one of the shareholders of the of not the shareholders, one of the directors of the Building and Loan Association, if Ralph Gonzalez, ULP government, was taking money from them to conduct the business of state. And have not been repaying the loans you will discover that shit stain was actually taking money from the building and loan association this is listen this is regular people poor people money we've taken enough to do projects 
and he have not been repaying it. That is why the building and loans went into so much trouble. Because if you remember, the building loans was doing business in a modern society. Institutions such like the building and loans normally insure their loans. So even though their members default on their loans, it will be covered by the insurance that was taken out on the, on the loans. Right? So even though the members, for example, if you go to Scotiabank, Scotiabank has a very high default on loans that they lend to people, a very high default. But because they insure their loans, it is taken care of. And the people who default on the loan are still indebted to Scotia for the default loans. Building and loans customers are very conscientious customers. They are not delinquent because building and loan customers are, are more senior people who have been involved in that thing from the inception. Building and loan customers know the benefit of the institution. So they would have gone there, they would have taken loans, and they would have been faithful in repaying the loans. Kill me, dead people. If our conserv did not bleed, the Building Loans Association, if our conserv was not taking loans to subsidize government projects, if conserv was not taking loans, the shit say was not taking loans from that institution, I will go on a seven days fast. But I wouldn't have to go on a, a seven days fast because I am confident that is why the management went to him to try and to get him to slow down and tell him, well, we, in, we indebted, we are, we, we are, we're going to be in bankrupt. That is why he acts so fast. That is why he closed on everything. That is why he acted so fast and closed on everything. Because he wanted, he didn't want the news to reach the public that he was taking poor people money because he was incompetent as prime minister he was now taking poor people money to run the country people government right government don't go into business to make profits when government go into business to make profits the business always busts because the oversight in government enterprises is as such that it leads to failure right so when you see what guns have is investing in hotel government investing in hotel it's gonna boss it's gonna send the country deeper and deeper and deeper into debt you understand it's going to send the country deeper and deeper and deeper into debt because the oversight in government manage business enterprises is not there and therefore it never works that is why government stays away from getting involved in private enterprises are talking everything in one you understand it leading it just leading to from one thing to another so people be careful right and i would tell you this let me take let, let me let us recap become i'm uh, getting hungry now let us recap one Kibak should never take Mr. John to be cautioned. Even if they, are, they, they made reports against him, whatever report was made against Mr. John was trivial child's play in relation to the report that Mr. John made. But we have to remember, Mr. John must suffer the consequences of his support for Ralph Gonsav's and the criminal activities that Ralph Gonsav have imposed upon the citizens of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Right? So let them take that. Let them be cautioned. Right? If I was his lawyer, before my client was cautioned by the police, the police would have had to caution 
the, the people who inflicted greater injury on my client whose criminal activities against my client was more severe right now the second thing we see here when the commission of police was asked about the defendant Ashel Morgan and Karim Nelson being cautioned he says that the police requested that they be cautioned but they have not replied to the request how can the police request some people who should be arrested charged and cautioned to be cautioned how could this happen it shows that Colin John do not understand the role and the function of St. Vincent and the Grenadines police, as police force. It shows that he do not understand the laws of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the application of these laws as it relates to the police situation. The next thing, Colin John has been a police officer for over 25 plus years. He has been a practicing lawyer. He's a qualified lawyer who has passed the Bar Association exams and is not practicing and have practiced in civil governance for the past four or five years in the highest prosecuting office in the land and yet he is incapable to apply his policing experiences his policing skills his policing teaching and his legal teaching and experiences to review a simple case file guess what all of the charges are basic charges. Any person can qualify these charges. Grievous bodily harm because the bullet was lodged in Mr. John's tie and it is in his bone. So that's grievous, right? You have injury, internal injuries, grievous bodily harm. Not internal, but internal, fleshy internal. Probably fractured bone or something like that. Now, um, the unlawful discharge of a weapon. Simple things. How can these things be complicated in a report? Right? Another thing we must always remember that the police is not responsible. for investigating uh, what do you call it the defendant's cases police only ask defendant if they want to do a cross complaint when they don't really want to do no work or when they don't want to arrest the person so what they try to do if we have you complaining against you both of you will get fed up and just drop the case and go away right so cross complaint is a police technique it's a lawful thing Right? Criminal cause complaint is a lawful thing, but is a police use it when they don't want to investigate a matter. You know, the people, two people say, okay, forget about it. Right? And when there is a cause complaint, it is not one file that is prepared. It is two files that should be prepared. Right? And the two files must have two sets of evidence and it must go and the director of public prosecution is who responsible for merging those files if he thinks that both parties should be prosecuted right so there's two sets of charge sheets and so forth and so forth so that is why there are confusion because the commissioner don't know what he's doing a trained police officer with over 25 years policing services, a trained lawyer with over five years law practice in the highest prosecutional office in the land. I don't know what he's doing. Secondly, I also said that I'm happy that this case bring the ULP supporters in a state where they unsure of how they stand with the biggest criminal of the land, the rapist, Ralph Gonsav, aka Shitstein, right? They're not sure. Because here we see Cornelius John, a loyal supporter. 
Ashel Morgan, a lawyer should put, and guess what? Cornelius was not only a support, he was a donor, financial donor. He gave to Red Guns a party financially from his business. Right? So here we see he have chosen that some members of his party are more important than others. So the question the members of the ULP have to ask. Which level of which scale of importance do I find myself with Ralph Gonzalez? And I'm happy that they are uncertain. You understand? Another thing, I also mentioned that there are simple investment the government of St. Vincent and Grenadines can make in the in member in the community that could cause them to cut back on over $10 million a year on foreign exchange. Simple, simple things. You understand? But I refuse to speak about them because I'm not going to give them any idea. Because Vincentians, St. Vincent and Grenadines dissolve the government they have. They dissolve the government they get. So they dissolve the pinch that they are feeling. Right? And I'm taking, before I close, with the powers invested in me, I now rechristen the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and Grenadines, Ralph Everett Gonsalves, to Ralph Shitstein Gonsalves, who will be known by the community as Shitstein. If you keep Vincent and divided, you will keep them a slave. Keep them in, multi, in mental bondage till they all go to their graves. You understand that's what he's doing? He is doing what is called the Willie Lynch. Keep Vincent and divided, and you'll keep them a slave. You'll keep them in country, you'll keep them under, under your thumbs forever. You see right now, his party is divided, Ashel against Mr. John. People who want justice against people who don't care for justice, who align themselves with the ULP. Keep them divided, keep them a slave. That's what he's doing, Willie Lynch. He was a Bajan. He was a slave owner, I almost. He was a slave owner that operated in Barbados, who realized that when they keep the slave divided, you keep them under your thumbs and under control. So this is what Willie Lynch came up with. Put the tall slave against the short slave. Put the light-skinned slave against the dark-skinned slaves. Put the whole slave against the field slave. Once you find, once you can find an area to divide these slaves, you would always keep them slaves and they will remain slaves for 400 years after they were free. That is what Willie Lynch, Shitstein, Ralph Gunsav is doing in St. Vincent and Grenadines. He's keeping the people divided. He's having some suffer and while some prosper. So now these UL, the ULP people who are prospering, laughing at the NDP people who are suffering, divided, divide and conquer. It's the white, it's the white technique for keeping black people slave, right? So all he's doing is what slave masters for centuries have been practicing. It is called the Willie Lynch technique. If you keep a slave, if you keep the slave divided, you will always have slave. Because when something go wrong, if you find out that Sherman is plotting against him, in order to get the slave, the, the ma that is why I shall run to him first. Because I shall realize that if she tell on Mr. John Force, she is in favor with Ralph. Keep the slave divided. 
That is why it took so long for black people to become free. Because they were all of them were trying to get the favors of the master. So when a group of slaves decide, hey, let us go and take over the house, kill everybody, one of them who want to go work in the kitchen run and say, Massa, 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 um, Charmin was trying to, she, she and, she and, um, Mikey was plotting to come and kill you and to take over. They go to whip them publicly. Charmin in the kitchen. Charmin, um, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I in the kitchen now. You understand? Keep them divided. Throw them a bone now and again. Let them fight for the bone. You understand? And the one who ain't get the bone and get injured, he's gonna be vexed with the one who injure him to get the bone. If you keep a slave divided, you will always keep a slave. You think Falcon's have no it with? You think he did not use his demonic powers to put this in Ashel Morgan's and Karim Nelson's head? You think his chosen sides were accidental? No, he have a plan. Keep, keep us divided while Storm Gun serves manipulate the land owner in Beckway. We are too divided trying to get justice for the man who don't deserve justice. Cornelius John, like Cornelius John, take we get. You understand? While over a million worth dollar, over a million dollars from the United Nations SVG Friendship Trust go fund me is still unaccounted for. Keep them divided while we use that money to give Storm needed collateral so he can have his project. While they are trying, um, the Council General in Canada also have a GoFundMe pro program where nobody knows about getting money using the state resources to get money for storm project because let me tell you something people all of this money are unaccountable for accounted for storm this is storm bill up look every man jack in california building up black children building up right application is not is not profitable unless you can get a company who can buy it from you for a couple hundred thousand dollars to utilize for their business. Storm never sell it up in the entire life, so you have no money, right? If Storm build an app, the app, if people are to subscribe to use this app, where the monthly article by the right article by the use of the app, the amount of money he would make on that app will be will be there for all to see if the accounts are to be done star me hand money i am convinced also right the money that was re listen to me the united nation svg friendship trust was set up in august right with no political with no particular um objective they started a vocal for me program and i know vincent was not supposed to learn about this we were not supposed to learn about this go for me program had it not been for a lady from england who called me and informed me about it we would have never known that the sin and grenadines has a, an unofficial company in England, in the United Kingdom, called the UK SVG Friendship Trust. We would have never known that. We would have never known that the Friendship Trust had collected from Vincentians and friends of Vincentians in, in the United K Kingdom over 300,000 plus pounds. We would never know that. That money would have gone into Storm Account. And guess what? Up to today, the Friendship Trust 
only spend twelve thousand dollars so they have a million plus dollars unaccounted for that has not gone for the purpose for which you have raised the fund people we talking everything i want i didn't intend to go so long but i'm getting hungry now i'm going down to let rav guns i've tried to let shit stain people in california caesar mr caesar how are you <laughs> oh, i think god could handle me i had no shame i had no i'm not afraid of anything people thank the most high for his knowledge and understanding and wisdom i thank the most high for the opportunity to bring this knowledge understanding and wisdom to my people share this video if you feel like if you don't feel like don't share it